We are going through exercise 17D and in this video we will be answering question 3 which says for the function f of x equals 2x minus 1 squared find the values of x for which f of x equals 0. So we've done this thousands of times before. We know that f of x is simply this so let's write that down and then set it equal to 0. So it's going to be 2x minus 1 squared equal 0. And now we just need to solve it for x. I'll divide both sides by 2 in order to get rid of this 2 here. So I'm going to get x minus 1 squared equals 0. I will then square root both sides to get rid of this square. So I'm going to get x minus 1 is equal to 0. And then finally I'll plus 1 to both sides. So I'm going to get x is equal to 1. And just like that we have arrived at our answer. If we were to reflect on what this means graphically, let's come over here to Desmos and let's graph f of x. And as you can see, if I were to go to this point right here where x equals 1, my y output is 0. And that's exactly what we've shown. What we've really done here is just found the point in which my graph intercepts the x-axis. And it does so at one point right there. Fantastic. How easy is that? We've done it thousands of times before. Let's now move on to B and C. And as you can see, what we're doing is we're finding uh, the values of X for when our derivative is equal to zero or is greater than zero. We're dealing with the derivative. So let us find the derivative. Uh, let's come over here and let's go find F dash X. Now this is gonna take a bit of time here. There is a better way to do this, but we don't have those tools quite yet. So let's just go through the long way. Let me begin by writing out what f of x is. It is 2x minus 1 squared. So there is a better way to do this, but for now what we're going to have to do is uh, expand this out. So it's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. Then I need to distribute out this 2. So it's going to be 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. Now that it's in this form, now I can find my derivative. So it's going to be 2 times 2 is 4, reduce the power by 1. Then this is just going to be minus 4, and there it is. That is what my derivative is going to be. So let me just highlight that in green. That is my derivative right there. So we're now going to use that to solve for b and c and so on. So let us do that. Let us come down here. Let's answer these questions. So the first of which is when our derivative, so f of x minus four is equal to zero. So I'm just going to do it in exactly the same way I did it before. I'm gonna write down the derivative, set it equal to zero, and now solve for x. I'm obviously going to plus four to both sides first, then divide by four, so x is going to be equal to one, just like that. Let me highlight that answer. Let's now move on to the next one. When is my derivative greater than zero? So again, I would write it out greater than zero and hopefully you can see what's going to happen here is it's just going to be this easy and then finally i'm sorry not finally we still have two more questions i'm getting ahead of myself uh so now it's less than zero let me zoom let me go down a bit more so this is going to be 4x is less than 4x is less than 1. Good. And now let's answer our final one. Our derivative is equal to negative 2. So I'm going to go 4x minus 4 is my derivative. Let's set it equal to negative 2 and then solve for x. I first I'm going to plus 4 to both sides, which is going to give me 2 on this side. Then divide by 4, which is going to give me a half. And just like that, we have answered all these questions. Now, the, the question itself doesn't require it of us, but let's now just take some time and reflect on what we've done. So, we've found all these values, which is great, but what do they mean? So, to help us understand this, let's come over here and graph our derivative, which is 4x minus 4. So, there it is right there in black. 4x minus 4, there's our derivative. Now, what do we know about the derivative? We know that the derivative is the gradient of the tangent. So let's look at e for a second. Let's just spend some time considering e. 
if my gradient is negative two, if my gradient is negative two, if I were to write down the rule for the tangent, it's going to be y is equal to negative two, so that's my, that represents my gradient right there, plus some number. If I could find what c is, I could graph my tangent, couldn't I? Absolutely. So what I need to find c is a point on the line, and we know a point on the line. We know that x equals a half is going to be a point on the line because we subbed it in and we got it out. So what we need now is the y value that goes along with this. So what is my y going to be when x equals a half? So I'm going to have to plug that in to y equals 2x minus 1 squared. So let's just do that for the time being. So it's going to be y is equal to 2 a half minus 1 squared, which is going to be equal to two. This is going to be minus a half squared. This is going to become, I'm going to have to make some room for myself here. This is going to become one over four. And then this is going to become a half. So that means this two is going to be a half. So y is going to be equal to a half. Now that I've got both my x and my y, I can now sub those into this, into my tangent, in order to find what c is going to be. So it's going to be a half here equals negative two, a half plus c, plus c. Let's scroll down, let's keep on answering this question. So this is going to be, this is going to be negative one plus c. So therefore c, is going to be equal to three over two. That means if I were to tell you what this is going to be, I can get rid of this C right here and I can put in three over two. Now, let us just reflect on this for a moment before we graph it. This should be where you get excited. I'm saying that this is my tangent and this is my tangent, tangent. It has a gradient of negative two. So let's come over here and let me type in y equals negative two x plus three over two. And as you can see here, the point at which that intersects is a half, a half, which is exactly what we found here. So this is the tangent to f of x when my gradient is negative two. So yeah, that's just a way we can reflect on what we've just done. We're going to be doing this a lot more and it's really important that you just conceptually understand what we're doing. So even though the question doesn't, if I've read it correctly, it doesn't require us to do this. This has just been all a bit of extra credit just so we can visualize what we are actually doing for this question. Uh, hopefully it's been helpful to you and I didn't confuse you too much. We'll be talking about this a lot more. I'll see you in another video.